Hello and welcome. I'm Enigmas. Let's go. Chris, I got a little gizmo here. Something here. I think I am facing. Yeah, I'm good. All right. Cool. Yeah. So uh, let's figure out how to code and stuff. Uh, I'm Enigmas. Let's uh, let's code. So what are we doing? We are today trying to figure out how to do some rendering. Uh, we're gonna try to figure out how to do some rendering using the Bevy game engine. Let's see, have there been any updates since I've checked it? it? Seemed like it was going at a pretty fast pace, right? So let's get up the news. Looks like we're still maybe at zero point. Go ahead. Here we have the GitHub's and stuff. Now, yeah, zero two one. I believe that we are at that. Cool. Yep, still up to date on this fast moving uh, game engine. That is cool. So today, yeah, we we need to figure out how to like render tiles or something. And it's like you know. But I thought we did that last time, Enigmas. Well, you know. It's true that we have, you know, tiles rendering. All right. And as soon as it uh, compiles, which uh, must have touched something. <laughs> hey, there we go. Yeah. So, uh, you know, yeah, we've, we've got some tiles. They kind of rendered. But now we have to fill up this whole space with tiles efficiently. So they can be redrawn every frame. Right? Preferably without causing whoa, what you see? Then you turn that then you turn that little edge thing off. Alright. <laughs> yeah, that was uh that's not good. Alright, so but whatever. Yeah, so we gotta we gotta figure out some render some tiles properly. So we've got uh we've got a Revy I package or Bevy immigration package. You know, so it was a little cooler than Bevy Int. Perhaps a little less uh, confusing. Just Bevy I. Uh, I think I've seen in a variety of other places where they will just uh, let's use the same name as the thing that they're using integration code for. So, like, eh, let's see, like, you know, whatever. What was really cool, though, is how IntelliJ helped us out with the uh, change of the name. All I had to do was uh, change this guy right here. Do the Shift F6. You know, to do a refactor. The next thing I know, like, this directory named changed. Right, and everything else in here changed. Everything that was uh, relying on it in here, it all changed. So, like, that was pretty sweet. So, uh, good job, IntelliJ. That was, uh, that was pretty awesome. Loving that. But, yeah, so we've got... This time it did. Whenever I'm on stream, it pops up where it's supposed to. <laughs> Top left corner. I think I think I did dry it earlier. I don't know. At some point we need to get into the windowing and be like, remember where you were last left, sort of a thing. Little user experience things like that. It count, you know. It count for making things better. All right, making uh, making your users happy. But yes, yeah, so we got we got all this ugly repetitive code here. Yeah, that uh, and now it's time to clean it up, right? That's uh, that's what we do. We we get a bunch of stuff to work, and then we clean it up. We get a bunch of stuff to work, and you clean it up. So, um, so yeah, I mean, like that's so that's kind of the naive implementation with uh with with sort of specs and bevy and everything else, right? This is just treat these uh like individual tiles of a map. Exactly as you would any other sort of a sprite, right? And just throw it up there with its uh, with its transform, and uh, and render it. That's that's quite a lot of work, actually. Because what like what are we even doing, man? So we've got. Let's assume let's assume a 1080p sort of resolution, right? Let's uh let's assume that. 
All right, so we're, we're gonna take we're gonna take some tiled notes, maybe. Right? I'm not sure if uh, I'll need to save them into a thing or not. So we'll just say new uh, scratch file. Right? So uh, yeah, plain text. We're gonna go with the uh, you know tile. So we need some tile notes. All right. So just uh, assuming a right. 1920 by 1080, sort of a uh, win, win, window size, right? Then, then what? Then we have, is it 40? Because we have 16 by 16 tiles that are going to be multiplied by 3. So 3 times 16 is 48, unless I checked. And so we've got, uh, what, 1920 over 48, which is 40, right? Cool, so we've got uh, the 1080 over 48, which is 22.5, right? So, so that's uh, 22.5. And so how many tiles is that to render for just one screen? You know, no, no player moving around, no camera moving around, no nothing. Just, I, I, need, a, I need a tile map at least that big. How many tiles are we talking? All right, so 40 times 22.5, right? That's, uh, that's 900 tiles. All right, so that's, uh, that's a few. A few tiles. You know. The, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, all right. So, and maybe, you know, that, that seems like a maybe a medium-sized map. You know, a full screen sort of map like that. You know, think about, you know, think about a uh, Link, like all the the new the new Link game, the claymation game, right? What what were they doing? They, you know, they they were doing a bunch of stuff. Let's see, right? So we uh, what was that? What was that Toonie Link game called? It came out. It was kind of claymation, right? That uh, that new uh, that, that new Zelda, that new Zelda game. Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamities. Is that what I'm looking for? I thought I was looking for like that remake. Right? It was like a was it a remake of that old game. Yeah, Link's Awakening. Right? So let's uh Alright, so we got some Link's Awakening. Let's just uh Gameplay. So sometimes, right? I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute this. All right. So yeah. So we got we got a little game here. See, in, in overworld screens like this, right? This is a uh, mini windows, you know, window sizes of uh, map here. I believe that this this map goes on for quite some time, right? So we got a guy. He's walking around. He's going all sorts of places. He's doing all sorts of things. Right, that's uh boom. All right, that's the that's the kind of sort of thing you need to be thinking about. All right, so it's only nine hundred tiles for just one window size of of, of you know of tiles nine hundred right, for one window, and uh, you've got you've got you know a lot of games are going to have some big. Yeah, you know, a lot of maps, right? They're gonna have lots of uh, lots of stuff going on. So we need a way of efficiently rendering tiles, uh, and preferably without spawning and despawning like hundreds, you know, thousands of these uh, of these bevy entities. I think, right? So where did our, where did our, where did our code go? Yeah, here we go. So so yeah, it's like you know the naive. Of, Approach is definitely like you know, throw one of these uh, throw one of these tile guys, you know, you, you take your whole you take your whole tile map, right? Do like some nested for loop, iterate over it, spawning all these uh, tiles. I can I can, I, wanna, I I see that kind of not going well, but uh, but I don't know. I don't know. anyway. So we're gonna we're gonna try to figure out some code. Try to figure some stuff and things out. All right, so I am going to head over to our music station.
Hopefully, you guys let me know how the audio levels are. Yeah, making sure things are good. I appear to be at the uh, negative 35 decibel range for the Muzak so far. That's, uh, seems pretty music -y. Yeah. Right, so. Uh, by the way, I have no idea how to do any graphics programming whatsoever, so. <laughs> I'm trying to figure this stuff out live, I guess. And in trying to figure this stuff out live, it seems like there are a couple of approaches that we could, uh, that we could be taking, yeah? Uh, so, so it seems like we could be taking a sort of a voxel-esque approach, right? Where we could render 900 squares, right? And each one of these squares will have the, have the appropriate texture on it. And the, and the point here is to basically use the modern, uh, rendering techniques of you know, here it talks about display lists or vertex buffers. I'm not 100% sure of kind of like what the Vulkan or the WGPU, you know, RS sort of uh, corollary, cor corollary is. But, uh, yeah, but in OpenGL world, you, you, you do these sort of draw elements, draw arrays, that sort of thing. You know, the vertex, uh, you know, vertex buffers. I think that vertex buffers was definitely kind of the newer thing that uh, that was going on. And the thing that uh, is like I'm likely to find in uh, in WGPURS, something, something like vertex buffers. The idea is to, we want to try to minimize our draw calls. Right? He talks about, uh, you know, for the creation of a chunk, using only one render call to draw all the blocks that we contain, you first have to generate the vertex buffer for the chunks. See, so, that, so it's all about generating the vertex buffers, getting all that stuff up and going, and then, uh, bam, you just you slam it down there, and, uh, and, you, and, you, and you render that mesh for each chunk. And, uh, and indeed, if we take a look over here at the tiled example that we have from this uh, Bevy plugin, that looks like, s s what, John Star Aron? But this fellow here, right? He, uh, he, he's got some sort of a tiled plugin for Bevy, where he may have already g given, given us a uh, base sort of a solution, a foundation to work from. I'm hoping that that works well. The frag, fragment shaders and the vertex shaders seem like, um, you know, they're pretty uh, good to go. Hello, program. Right. Yeah, it's good seeing people show up. But yeah, so, so those, those shaders seem really simple to kind of work with. And so we can, so we can take this sort of a voxel-esque approach. You know, and I'm calling it a voxel-esque approach because, you know, you look here at, like, what, the map? Is it in the map? Yeah, see, this guy, he's got he's got this chunk, right? Well, chunks are very voxel-y. We can, we can see from, from here where it's like, you know, we're, we're going to do some chunks. You know, and chunks are all about having, like, uh, you know, we're going to do stuff for the chunks. Uh, there's a block data structure, right? So we've got blocks. And then it's active, although I think that should just be like one of these states, right? Kind of like a negative one sort of a state. And then what? We've got a... Uh... Yeah, then we've got chunks. And a chunk should basically just be, you know, a list of stuff, right? Yeah, so he's got... So he's got these blocks. Star, star, star! So I think that's... Is that a... Yeah, it's kind of like a... An array, an array of arrays. Sort of thing, right? It's like a three-dimensional array sort of thing going on here with our uh, with these blocks, and uh, yeah, so you, you do that sort of stuff. Yeah, see there, he shows it there. It's a three D array, right? It isn't vital that it be stored in a three D array, but it is useful if you want to easily index the block data, such as doing this sort of a thing. Uh, but there's also ways where you can just have a uh, single, you know, sort of array. And uh, still, still have 3D or 2D stuff, whatever you need to have happen, right? And uh, and indeed, it's, it's a it's like a, a approach that a lot of people go with. 
I'm not sure, 100 percent sure why, if there's any sort of a difference there in terms of being able to manage it. Um, maybe it's easier to read that sort of data in, just a single array. Persist it, do what you need to with it. I like so. All right. So we can treat our tiles like voxels, rendering kind of a quad that we do texturing over, right, uh, for the given tile. Which is kind of samey to what we were doing here, but hopefully with a, a lot less overhead from only having like, you know, we'll, we'll probably only have like the, maybe the one, and I'm not even sure if the map counts as an entity. All right, but there's one sort of a resource thing that it'll be there and the renderer will get set up and it'll read from the resource and it'll, it'll figure out what we need to do, right? Right, so we'll, we'll, we'll have to figure out how all of that works in, in terms of integrating it with bedding. So we could treat things like boxes. The other thing that we could do is basically render uh, a single sort of a quad. Let's see. Let's see, where did he, uh... Wasn't that annoying? Alright, let's try... If I just type in Toji, will I get something interesting? Yes. So, yeah, so this guy had some... Had an idea, and it seems like it's a common thing that people do. Where basically, I could just have one quad. Right? Man. <clears throat> Sure. Don't know on me today. All right. You could basically have one quad, uh, and you texture over it using these sorts of uh, shader programs here. Okay. And this guy goes over like you know, here's how you get the indexes from your tile map, sort of a thing, or or from your tile set, and then you get the indexes from your tile map, and you turn your tile map into an uh, basically into a texture, and you feed this texture into your shader, and then you and then you use the shader stuff to basically do all the UV coordinates and whatnot. And apparently there are, you give multiple textures, right? You give basically the tile map image texture uh, to the shader as well as your atlas, right? Your tile atlas texture to the shader. And then, uh, boom, you've got, uh, one quad, right? And it's, uh, it renders all of your, uh, renders all of your tunnels really well. And that's kind of the, that's, that's the idea with it. So, let's see, so, yeah, so there's that guy, there's... All right, so, yeah, one quad, you render all the things. And, uh, people say that's pretty efficient. Um... So we can, uh, yep, yeah, it can render tiles of any size, uh, it can handle, like, a whole bunch of different types of tiles, which should be enough for anybody, right? Uh, the maps can be incredibly large, I like the idea of large maps, including, like, 2048 by 2048 tiles, depending on max texture size, with effectively no performance hit. Visibility culling is free and extremely precise per pixel, that sounds really good and efficient, right? Uh, yep, so we can scale by any factor we want. So we, we've already kind of got some scaling factor going, so we don't have to worry about that too, too much. But, uh, yeah, you can have as many different layers as you want. So basically, I'm guessing that you can just, you know, add more quads, rendering more tile maps. <laughs> right? Uh, they say that... Yes. Let's see. Yep, full... You could basically you have uh, little images that you load up, and there's your level, right? It's pretty fun. So, only support square tiles aligned to a grid. I'm fine with that. Uh, layer rendering is back to front to ensure proper transparency. Uh, maybe? Right, so... Yeah, so there'll be a little bit of overdraw and stuff and things, right? And that's... That is fine. I'm not sure what that little chime was. What's the chime? I thought I like muted my stuff here, man. I'm getting chimed. Ah, I didn't mute that one. All right, yeah. I don't even provide no hacker X nonsense. I don't even know what that is. 
Okay, you're muted now, website. Bad website. Timing at me when I'm trying to stream and stuff. All right, so yeah, so we have lots of squares or one square. You know, that's that's sort of the that's sort of the thing, right? That's that's what that's what we're trying to piece together and puzzle out. And what do we want to do? Lots of squares or one square. I think maybe like this does seem really fun, and I really love the idea. I think I like the flexibility of basically going kind of voxel is voxel esque sort of chunks and stuff. You know, because uh, you know, what if I decide I'm really bad at pixel art, and uh, you know, I'd rather get like a little three D tile map thing going. <laughs> Right, so if I if I've already kind of got a start on the way there, of like, hey, I've already got kind of a two D voxel thing going, right? And that's we could play around with that. Uh, I I do like how like it seems like it'd be extremely performant, but maybe a little limiting. Uh, I'm not 100 percent sure how animated tiles would work, which is a uh, which is another feature that might be uh, good to use. I think he says that you could, right? Let's see here. Um, yeah, animating tiles should be possible. It hasn't been implemented, so we could, might be able to figure that out. So you could probably redru reduce the overdraw by flagging tiles with transparency to be drawn in a separate pass. Uh, yeah, probably, right? But that's that's just that's just quads, right? Oh, I think he's trying. He's still just trying to draw to one. The one quad when he's talking about having multiple layers and layers with transparency. I wouldn't even bother with that. <laughs> I would just, uh, I would just have multiple quads at different Z depths. Yeah, do that sort of a thing. Let's see, um, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, you could throw it all into one quad, or we could have lots of quads. I'm kind of, I think I'm leaning toward having lots of quads. With the idea being that, like, you know, I kind of want to learn about some of this, uh, kind of, you know, common data structures of video game programming anyways. Having a 2D sort of tile voxel engine going sounds fun and good. Because uh, then there's like the, ooh, you know, how much of a stretch then is it to make a 3D sort of one, right? So, and indeed, we can even look at the 3D ones for inspiration to help us with our 2D ones. And, uh, and then we've got, uh, let's see, this guy here, I think he was also making a single quad. Yes, this that's what this is. Because he is a part of this guy. Yeah. This is all, this is the same guy here. So here's, uh, here's Chunks, and then here's, uh, people doing, uh, one textured quad. <laughs> so, yeah, so we can figure out layering, we can figure out all sorts of stuff. Um, I don't know. I'm a little extra nervous because this is like part of the game dev process that I, I get stuck on a lot of times. Or it's like just trying to figure this sort of stuff out. It's amazing. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just really bad at finding the sort of resources to help with understanding this sort of thing. I think with all the books I have on the subject. But I guess I, you know, I, I should read them. <laughs> Doesn't help that I don't read them. All right, so I can do it. Thanks for the encouragement, Wolfie. I need some today. All right, man. I just I don't even know, man. All of a sudden, I'm feeling like wow. Oh. I need a. I need to slip something special into my drinks, man. <laughs> Alright, yeah, let's get some let's get some beverages going. Yeah. <laughs> I guess first things first, let's even figure out how to render a bunch of tiles, you know, in, in kind of the dumbest way possible, right? And then, uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll kind of move on to smarter and smarter ways of rendering the rendering the tiles. This right here is obviously the dumbest way. Like, I didn't even put it into a loop. 
You know, people on the stream were like, you know, commenting about like, oh, look at this repetitive stuff you just threw out there. Oh, it's so bad. And I like to practice good coding even when, you know, it's throwaway code. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'll do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so this is like, you know, the worst of the worst ways of doing it. But we can only go up from there, right? Theoretically? Maybe? I don't know, man. All right, so. Let's, uh, let's start taking a look a little bit, I guess, at the uh, Bevy Tiled sort of plugin, right? So, cool, so we've got this, uh, we've got a little library, he's gonna do some imports and stuff. Oh, you know, plugin, yeah, so we got some plugins, we got some imports, we got some programmers giving thumbs up, alright, that's cool. So, and we've got, uh, what do we got here? We can add app, add assets, so he's got some sort of, a uh, Tiled map loader. We're not interested in loading maps at the moment. Uh, nope, we just want to draw a few tiles. That's it. That's all we want to do. So and then, so then what else? Uh, add, okay, add asset and map. Okay, and then he adds an asset loader. So this will be actually useful for some of our data types that we've already kind of got going. And we can try to figure out how to make them work. All right. And then what? We've got some sort of let resources, let that, okay. So he gets the resources from the app. He then calls get mutable on resources to obtain a render graph. And then to and then to the render graph he adds tile map graph or add tile map graph. Hmm, where did that function come from? That seems pretty funny. Alright. Add a tile map graph. I don't I don't believe that that's in the render graph thing. So, what did you do? You did some rust magic, I'm guessing, yeah? Let's see. Pipeline? Right, because what were we what were we looking at? This is the this is yeah, render graph. Render graph. Alright, so what do who uses render graph? Do you use a render graph? Alright, so render graph. Alright. Pipeline guy might. Yeah, he definitely imports render graph. And then what? And we say we we can impl tile map render graph builder for render graph. Alright, and that's that trait that's defined above, which just kind of implements or you know it defines one method. Add tile map graph. Alright. And then what? So the implementation then is we he takes the resources, right? And he does what? Self add system node. What is self now? Self is a render graph. All right. So the render graph then is adding a system node to itself, and node is. Tile map chunk. Huh, what is this about? Tile map chunk, huh? This is tile. Yeah, use crate tile map chunk. Wow, using crates? What kind of dependencies do you have? Are you cheating? Tiled, huh? Some sort of tiled dependency here. All right. RS tiled. Read maps from the tiled map editor for use in video games. Game engine agnostic. All right, excellent. So this fellow here, Matty Hall, appears to have developed a uh, yeah an engine agnostic sort of library for just reading and tiled maps. Excellent. 
And then uh, this guy here smartly uses it, which is which is good. Uh, so now what? Now what? We were looking at pipeline, yeah. So we have. Yep, so we can add some tile map rent. Where he says, like, yeah, give me some of that tile map junk. And we're adding a system node. Render resources node. Tile map chunk. New true. Alright. I'm not 100% sure what all that does. I guess we could, uh, we could take a look at render graph for ourselves and sort of get some documentation on it, like, Alright, yeah, we can do that. Let's see, so we've got some pub mod node. Oh. Oh, that's that's where it comes from. Look at that. Node. Node is there. And he says pub mod node. And then he creates a const called tile map chunk. And with this sort of a string here, it's tile map chunks, that's all. It's just some sort of static lifetime string. Which, uh, that is, that's quite the way to define it there. <laughs> I think I would have gone with something a little simpler, but I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe, you know people do stuff for reasons, right? Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm not exactly a Rust expert, so we'll figure it out, yeah? Alright, so, what can we do? So he adds a system note. This is a string. This is whatever tile map. So tile map chunk. That was from the library that he imported, right? That was from the tiled library. And then self add node edge. Right. I wonder what that's about. He got some sort of tiled map chunk. Right. So this is a um, Ranger Resources node. Tile map chunk. Where's the tiled map chunk? He got it from. Yes, we know the extern crate, right? Okay. I'll use crate tile map. Chunk. Right, if it says crate, that means it came from this crate. Hey, there we are. Tile map chunk. <laughs> Jeez, alright. Yeah, alright. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, so he's got some sort of layer IDs, a float 32s. Looks like we're doing some C kind of uh, stuff going on and things, right? Safe sprite is repper C and only consists of biteables. All right, so we've got some unsafe impl biteable tiled map. Um, what is that? Is that liquid courage for me? Okay. All right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Man, I'm feeling anxious tonight. I don't know why, man. Uh. I've, I've been doing pretty good lately, too, I thought, man. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, trying to explore some stuff, figuring things out. Learning on stream, I think, is the toughest part. Yeah. So, one thing to come across is, like, you know... Ah, I'm, I'm an expert in doing this for so many years and stuff and things. And now it's like, ooh, graphics and rendering and and all this stuff. Mm, it's kind of out of my comfort zone. Maybe that's all it is. But anyway, so I got this, I got this tile map. We've got uh, we've got some time map chunks. We've got uh, what some unsafe impl biteable or tile map chunk. That's very interesting. I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sure he's doing some very specific things here that I do not understand. That's okay. We're gonna we're gonna figure this out. We're gonna figure it out. All right. What does this do, man? Build tile map pipeline. Where is this ever called? Right? Or is this part of like, uh, how am I supposed to use it? Hmm. 
this is, this is public. So this generates a pipeline descriptor. Right, so we're inside of the pipeline descriptor, we're getting a variety of states, right? Rasterization state, depth stencil state, color states, uh, pipeline stages. Here's our vertex and fragment shaders, very good. We've got a... Uh... Are you used by anyone in here? Maybe? Yeah. All right, so he's used here with our uh, tile map render graph builder for render graph. All right, where we we set the pipeline, and we're setting the pipeline for this tile map pipeline handle. All right, where's that defined at? There we go. Here is our tile map pipeline handle. And that seems very like where did that come from? Are these just a bunch of random numbers that he threw in there? <laughs> I have no idea where did, where did that come from? <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So I don't, I don't even know, man. This is All right, so yeah, pipelines set some crazy random giant number. Is it U U one twenty eight? Oh my goodness, that's, that's insane. All right, I, I was wondering if there were U to one twenty eights. Apparently there are. All right, so <laughs> yeah, a conversation I was having with a buddy about uh, rust types and numbers and stuff, and I was like. You know, what if you're on the bigger edges of even a U64? I was like, well, that's what U60, that's what, uh, you know. <laughs> so you went, you, you went 28 so far. All right. Yeah, what am I doing? We've got, uh, we've got some tile map. Render graph builders. You got this crazy number handle. Who knows what that's for? Let me say to build the tile map pipeline, right? Which we determine is the main guy up here. So a lot of this seems like setup to put this function into this sort of pipeline here, right? Not sure, what that's about. All right. Maybe if I knew a little more about WGPURS, that would help. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't even know, man. Alright, so... Add node edge. Man, I, even, I don't even know about node edges. What node edges? How map chunk is a string. And he adds base node main pass. So here we've got we've got node a thing, and then we have base node main pass. Where did base come from? You come from here? Probably, right? So uh, there's base. Part of render graph. Alright. So yeah. Base node main pass. Hmm. Alright. It's uh Let's try some stuff. Let's go nuts. Let's go crazy. Let's just let's just start coding. And see what happens. See how many compiler errors we run into along the way. <laughs> that's uh that's that's how you do it, man. You just go nuts. That's what I'm gonna do, man. Nut. It's nutty time. Let's um. Let's see. So I could just throw it in here, maybe. Uh, we could also just throw it. In here, yeah. Let's throw it. Let's throw it in here for now. So right now, we've already, yeah, we already started defining some tiles in here. We need to clean this up. All right, cause that's all. That's all messy trash stuff. So what are we gonna do? Uh, okay, first we're gonna find some sort of a plugin. All right, that's gonna be great. We're gonna say, uh, pub struct over get ourselves situated for piping. 
Yeah, it's good. Come on, lean back. Lean back. Get that neck support up in there. I'm old. I need, I need neck support. I need, I need my special uh, glasses. Lights are too bright. I need all the, I need all the things. All right, you're right. The vault. There we go. Let's do that. Now, now we got some map, tunnel map plugin. Now we can impel our plugin, right? Or I don't even, it's not tile map. Box. Yeah, let's do that. How do we know precisely what it is that we're trying to get into here? Alright, we're not doing the quad thing, right? We're gonna do this, uh, we're gonna do this box. Render Klugen, and we're going to impulse Klugen for this. You're going to do what? What do you want? Implement the members, man. I don't even know. Alright, so. We could do an FN build. I think it's hilarious that it's called FN. It makes it sound like I'm saying nice stuff. But I just said FN build. Yeah. Builder, here we go. Alright, get some curly braces up in there, etc. Oh, I need that builder. Yeah, I think that's just the standard thing that uh, plugins take. Alright, so let's do that then. And we're gonna say, um, what are we gonna say? We're gonna say, oh, I wonder if we need to add assets. I need to do know that. Let's just say, let resources is equal to app dot resources. Oh, and we're gonna, we're gonna hope that that's okay. Why, why, are you all, why are you still fretting? What's going on here? Not all trade items. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Finally. Well, that's all I wanted to know. All right. Let not or mute, as it's better probably pronounced. Right? It's mute because it's short for mutable. Just like it's enum because it's short for an enumerated type. All right. That's that's how that works. Uh. Let's see. Here is equal to resources dot get mute. And then what? We are gonna say render. Render graph. Yeah man, give me some give me some of that render graph. Oh, then what? We're just gonna we're just gonna unwrap it. We're gonna assume that that succeeds. There's no way this could fail. Alright, that's kind of the uh idea. And then uh oh stop it. You gonna, are you gonna go away ever? I expected something. I don't know, man. What do you think you expected? Nothing. All right, great. Thanks. Kind of slow on me, uh, intelligent. Should, uh, figure out how to do this a little quicker. All right. So what? Add tile app graph. No, that's the crazy thing. It's the crazy thing. We don't need that. We don't need that at all. We don't need. To, we don't need to do anything. What are we gonna do? I don't know, man. I don't know. So, uh, do we even need resources? We need resources. I don't know. I don't know. So we've got like some asset loader, add asset map. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we do need that. Maybe we do. Maybe we do need that. So here's what we're gonna do. Um. Hmm. What do we got here? We got some sort of like add base graph, add a sprite graph, add a UI graph, add node edge. Lots of fun stuff to play with. I don't know what I want to do. I think I want to, right? So we, we got all those things, right? We're gonna say add box tile graph, right? And then we can uh, we can say resource. Them. Oh, but now I might want to like you know do some crazy stuff and things to make that happen. So how are we going to do that? Apparently, I think we had to have some sort of a trait. Right? Let's, uh, 
Yeah, let's just go ahead and go into this guy's um, pipeline, dude. Yeah, we, we've got some sort of crazy trait. All right, let's do some. Let's do a uh, uh, trait. It's like interfaces. Java are like traits, I guess. Gala. Gala. Which is the correct pronunciation. Oh. Hi, no. I want that box. I want that box tile. Right? Uh, box tile. Render graph builder. All right, so that's what we're doing. We're building up. We're building some render graph. We're going to say, effing add <laughs> box tile graph. All right. Now what? We should take a mute of self. Mutable reference to self. We're going to take some resources. I'm going to say amper resources. And then what? Um, and then what? At mut. Stop. Alright, right? Looking good? Cool. Impul. What is it? Yeah. Go on. Impul. The Vox Tile Render Graph Builder. For our what? For render grants. Oh, there we go. Now we, now we can say stuff like effing. Go ahead and copy that. Oh, got it. Now what are we gonna take? What are we gonna take in for this? Well, it already told us what to take in. Right here. Alright, so that's, uh, that's what we're going to do. Oh. There we go. And then what? We could say, uh... Yeah, so. Hooray! We did it, guys. That's, uh... That's how that works. Maybe. It's hard to tell, because, uh... IntelliJ's not compiling. But hey! Rust appears to be compiling it. So that is cool. Yeah. Just gonna hit that up with an underscore. And let that be happy. Alright, pretty sweet. Let's see. What do we got? We got some Vox Tile Render Graph Builder. Which IntelliJ finally <laughs> has given has given us the you know it's a blessing. Hey, maybe, maybe maybe it's in a new computer. I've, I do have a I do have a newer one with a more powerful CPU. We should have required in this one too. Did bring it up here? I don't know. Seems like a lot of effort though. <laughs> hmm. All right. So we got, man. We got some box tile render plugins. That all looks that all looks pretty fun and good. Yeah, I think we do have to have some sort of a resource. Otherwise, like, what is our render plugin rendering? Yeah. Uh, what, what do you mean, Wolfie? In in what way? I don't know if I was paying attention to to asking about whether or not I'm good. <laughs> All right. So that's so that's happy here. I do need to add some sort of a resource. So add tile map graph. Hmm. All right. That's for the that's for the plugin, right? I was thinking about doing resources. Yeah, alright. For the plugin. I might say something like what? App. 
stuff tab. Asset. Open map. There we go. And what? Map. There we go. And done. And asset loader. I need an asset loader. God. You need to figure out like what a map is. And there's also a, it also has a system process loaded map tiles. I don't know, man. It's just let's just let's just go with that for now. Figure out what that's about. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, so we're basically just gonna start off with just this. Right? Cool. And then what? So we add an asset, then he adds an asset loader, then he adds a system for it. Wow. So this is to help process loaded tile maps system. So that'll be it'll be interesting to take a look at. I wonder what's going on there. You can likely find it here, hopefully, right? Right, and this is where we've got like this is where like our tile is, this is where chunk. Right, all this sort of stuff. This is where fun data structures come into play. So we definitely do need that, right? So for fun, we're gonna go ahead and give it like a box, maybe like a vox map, sort of a sort of a deal. So we can stick with our theming here of like, no, really, we're trying to do like box tiles, box tile map. There we go. See so box tile map. That's pretty fun, right? Let's do that. So. Go ahead, you know, we could we could just do like mods right in here. Yeah, we just we just do mods right in here and we can organize it later, right? So what do we want? We want for this mod. What's it gonna be called? Like uh some sort of uh I don't know, let me say box uh box man. Right? Wow. Do we need a semicolon there? Why not? I don't know. Yeah, let's just, let's just start throwing some stuff up in the there. Kind of give us some ideas for for what it is that we're, we're that we're doing. Yeah, do we have to like reimport stuff now that we're inside of this like uh this thing here? I don't even know. All right, so we've got this right here is for our render plugin, right? So this is okay. This right here is the plugin. That's kind of base. That's base stuff there, right? So where where would we get this uh, graph render builder from pipeline? I think. So we could say pub mod pipeline sort of get the sort of stuff organized a little better. We can kind of see what's what's going on. Now what? It's like I don't. I need to import it. Yes, we do. There. What do you what do you want? Why do I have to How many times do I have to import these things? Kinda of weird, right? Alright, so now we've got render graph. Is there like an alternate sort of uh place I could have gotten render graph from? Or is that just is that just where it is? No like Come on, come on, TelJ, you could do this. Um, whatever. Getting bored, waiting for it. All right, Control Nine. See what we see. What we got. I don't. I don't know what a map is. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm getting to it. Don't worry about it. Right. So then what? We're gonna call. So that's the. Uh, so we're, right. We're already in sort of some sort of a box map thing there, right? Is that really what we want? Mm. No, that's not what we want. We want to call this some sort of like uh, box, box tiles. Yeah, box tiles. Right. And then we've got uh, we've got what? Some sort of a box tile map. You just call it map because it's inside of box tiles. It should be pretty obvious. Kind of what's going on here. 
All right, that looks pretty good. So yeah, so now we've got this uh, mod. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we want. That's what we want, I think, right? Yeah. Then we can have our own map. Or we could have some sort of a uh, pub struct map. And our pub struct map meshes, huh? I mean, how many meshes do we need for a map? Hmm. Yeah. I like the idea of, yes, pub tile pies. I guess we could use a Vec 2. Right? That seems to be like an effective holder of dimensions, right? Yeah, let's just, just throw that under there. Alright, sure. Image folder. I don't, I don't know about image folders. Uh, could do like an image folder, right? And do like kind of a one tile per image sort of a thing, but I'm not sure if I'm if I want to do that. I'm not sure if I really want a one tile per image thing. I'll tell you what, our our end goal here, right now we're gonna start off with the, the, the simplest tiles you've ever seen, right? Like super simple tiles. Let's uh if I can scroll to it. There we go. Alright, we're talking about like Alright. So like that's a floor, and that's a wall. That's a grate. That's maybe a switch or I don't know, a torch or something. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Uh, you know, south closed door. South open door. See, because it opens to the south. Yeah, you flip them around and stuff, and etc. Well, it's like, I don't know about rotating these tiles either, you know? I don't, I don't know if I want to store that inside of my, my mesh grid. So, let's, so it's easier than just to take a giant image like this sort of guy right here. Right? And we're just going to we're gonna we're ignore the update for half a moment. All right? Because I'm streaming here. Leave me alone, IntelliJ. All right, so then what? Then what are we gonna do? All right, we're gonna have all sorts of tiles and stuff and things. I don't want to rotate them because it's okay. We've got these are tiny t tiles. We can have lots of duplicate data all throughout it. We don't care because uh, you know the super high res stuff that most games are running at these days. Yeah, that ain't nothing. Or, or, or my tiles ain't nothing compared to that stuff, right? Right. So what do I want? What am I? What am I trying to demonstrate? I was trying to take a look at something. What am I looking at? Yeah. Yeah. This. This right here. This is the magic. This is the magic. Okay? This is what happens. So, this guy here, he can make all sorts of tiles. And go in all sorts of crazy places. And you can draw the tiles if you really wanted to. Yeah, sure. And then what? And you can import them. You can do other other stuff. This guy, he'll he'll generate tile sets. Generates them. For my two little images. Suddenly you have all sorts of images. So it's pretty amazing. Right? That's sort of the idea, right? As I want some tile setter compatible stuff for now. This is what I'm thinking of. So and it's gonna it's gonna put stuff out into big files. Not, not 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 like these onesie onesies sort of files that you you then assemble into something. No, yeah, you start off with some raw assets. You get a little project pipeline thing going, assemble it into stuff, and then boom. A tile setter is going to make some cool stuff. Maybe we can have tile setter output some JSON for us. I think in the newer version that I don't currently have, I think is available for beta testing. They do have some sort of a JSON output. Which uh, will be pretty interesting. We can take a look at that and try to figure out how to use it for our own purposes. And that'll be that'll be very good, very good. But um, yeah, so you know, so that's the idea, man. We're, we're prepping, we're prepping for Tile Setter 2.0. We're prepping for um, you know, being able to draw lots and lots of tile tiles, millions of tiles. You know, millions of high resi tile. And that's the idea. And then if we get bored of tiles, you know, we can change this over to being like a 3D box tile thing. And we do grid maps instead. Ah. 
So, uh, so that's what, that's what we're that's what we're doing. That's what we're working on. We're gonna we're gonna make some pro progress. All of the tiles, indeed, will be all of the tiles, indeed. Yeah, let's just let's just keep grabbing stuff from Prelude if we can. Import Prelude and Render Graph. I'm pretty sure we got. Import. Now what? I guess this guy here, he needs to use... He's inside of here, right? So we need to use what? Our, our, um... He needs to use our pipeline. And I'm like, what? Eh, star. Yeah, just, just... Let's just, let's just use pipeline. Wait, wait, is it star or is it underscore? I get used to Scala again to it. Yeah, all that, all that programming at work. Getting me used to doing, like, work programming. Ugh. <laughs> can you imagine? Uh. Alright, so let's, uh, yeah, so we can, like, bring that guy over here, right? Yeah. You don't want to import too, too much in here. So, we've got plugin, right? Yeah, see, plugins there. App builders up there. Alright, looking good. Render graph. Where's my render graph? You're, you're there. Cool. We got render graph. So everything there looks pretty happy. So this right here is a map. Right? Cool. And it has inside of it a map. And these are all pub structs and pub mods and cetera. So let's see if it compiles. Because IntelliJ isn't going to tell us. <laughs> let's see. No method named add asset. Found. For mutable reference app builder in the current scope. Oh man. I know I was doing something or other. Come on. I just want to do like an app asset. Oh. That there all looks like it ought to be there. Hmm. Okay, so apparently there's something called Add Asset that I guess is part of the Bevy pre Prelude that I needed to import, which supplies me with that function. Much like how this function does not really exist in render graphs unless I you know, define it to exist for a render graph. It's very kind of a weird system Rust has for this sort of thing. I'm not used to it yet, but it is... It is very curious. It is very curious indeed. Like, you can just apply all sorts of traits to a thing that already exists, and as long as there's, like, implementations of the trait for the thing that exists, you can add all sorts of crazy functions. That's, uh, that's this kind of weird. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's an unused import now. So we can, uh, control nine again, see what we get. Are we, uh, I think we're happy. I think Russ is happy now. That is good. All right. Yes. Yeah, so we're starting to make to make some stuff and things. Now, I know that in our little example here, right, in our little bevy plugin example that we've been playing with, uh, they take, so inside of the map, this is where the tile is defined. And we already have somewhat of a definition for a tile. So we will basically just, we can move our tile into map. And we can define our own chunk. I'm not going to worry about tile set layers at the moment. Right? We can have a layer. Right? For our tile set layers. For our tile set layer. Yeah, like I said, I'm not going to worry about tile set layers for the moment. Oop. I just want to keep this as simple as possible. As, as you know, possible. Sort of a thing here. So we've got uh, we've got some tile size, vec two. 
So I'm going to assume that that means like pixel size. Could be, could be wrong. Maybe we want it to be game unit size. In which case for us it's 1. So it's either 16 or 1. I don't know what to put here. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out as we try to get things to draw, right? We've got a... Uh, yep, so we've got... So, um, wait. Map has a map. Oh, this is a tiled map. Right, which came from... Uh, it would be from a crate. Yes, because we know that he uses a tiled here. This guy likely does have some sort of a map, right? So that's fine. We're not we're not terribly interested in tiled. It's I'm sure it's really good software. I've I've looked at it many times. You know, that's uh, just not what I'm using for any of my projects right now. I don't think. I don't got no problem with it. I'm sure it is good. I'm just not using it. Putting out the center of a map could be fun. I'm assuming that that's what this is. Not sure why it's a VEC 3. Just Origin Z, huh? <laughs> Unsupported orientation. Oh, some of this is to help support or, or like uh, normal sort of square maps versus isometric maps. All right. Uh, we so we will not be supporting isometric with this project. But uh, yeah, it seems like that's just a matter of uh, throwing a flag in there and changing your arithmetic based on what you want to do. That's not that's not too bad. The here. He's got some sort of tiled map center. Tiled map components. That's weird. So he's got some sort of map map. Which is this guy here. Why use tiled colon colon map? Alright. And then there is a tiled map. Ah, which has... So the tiled map components has a map asset where we have we, we get a handle to a map, I guess. He's got some materials, including some color materials. We've got some origins, we've got some centers. Okay, right. This is for the uh, this is like the component sort of thing to make an entity out of it. I got it. So yes, I like the I so I did not like the idea of every tile being its own entity. That seemed incredibly wasteful and not good. Um, but, uh, you know, making your map an entity, that seems good. Right, we probably want systems and things to be able to do something or rather with our maps, right? Well, that's, uh, well, that is good. Because it's processing stuff. Yeah, this is the system that he made for processing his maps. So this will be uh, it's quite the stuff to go through. I'm not entirely sure what it's about. Sadly, Bevy doesn't support multiple meshes, only a single entity with multiple materials. Uh, change once it does. <laughs> okay. So multiple meshes on a single entity with multiple materials. Interesting. All right, so we're getting the weeds here. He's doing some sort of commands spawn for chunk components. All right. So instead, for now, spawn a new entity per chunk. Ah, all right. So a new entity per chunk. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Multiple meshes on a single entity. I see. I see. I see. So it's a, she's talking about bevy entities in the ECS world of what an entity is. Excellent. So he's saying that uh, does not yet support multiple meshes or a single entity. So that's why for each chunk it has to be its own entity. That's fine. That's fine. I get. I get. I get what's going on there. That is cool. 
So let's see here. We got um, some material handle. We got some material math. We've got some. Uh, we've got some iters. We've got some filters. We've got some collects. Man, what's up? Uh, come on, man. Mm hmm. Yeah, just cleaning some stuff up for half a moment. Crazy how fast stuff builds up. I don't want it to. Steph, I'm talking to you. Alright. We've got what here? We've got some sort of changed maps. Changed maps. Man, is, can you mutate your maps? Is that what this is about, man? You have like, you put dudes on your maps? What's going on here, man? We've got asset event created, changed maps, insert some handle. Oh, wow. Wow, alright, so maybe we can uh, change some, maybe, maybe this guy can change the maps. That's pretty cool. So we got some new meshes, new stuff and things, and he's just gonna, he's gonna go through it, and he's gonna power through it, and he's gonna like, you know, for every new chunk that we have to deal with, do some stuff and things. Alright, some of this too might be just about like, uh, keeping the game up to date, kind of as you move around to spawn more chunks as you go, right? Alright. So, yeah, so let's, uh, let's get started. Let's get, let's, we're, we're just gonna try to get some super basic -y stuff going, man. I just wanna, like, come up with a simple sort of a thing. And say, render my simple thing, please. And then it does it. And it's like, wow! That'd be amazing, right? So, but will we be able to get to it tonight? I don't know. I think it could probably go for another hour. Let's, uh, let's pick up the pace, I guess. Yeah? Get a little sidetracked and stuff today. The uh, not good. I'm gonna take some medicine. So excuse me for a moment. All right, let's uh, let's see what we can do, right? Got uh, some tiles. <clears throat> hmm. This is all gonna be inside of our inside of our little map module here. Got uh, some. We already, we already have we already have kind of a tile. Yeah, we do have kind of a tile already. Let's uh, let's just let's just move them up here and see what we get. All right. So this is more of a tile type that we have. Right? It's not really a tile. I'm gonna want to rename that. Uh, control. Alright. Yeah, this guy already did such a great job at some other refactoring. Let's just tile. There we go. And now what? Can I do like a refactor to move it into some place? Hit refactor. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna move it, man. I wanna, like, I wanna move it. 
Yeah, I'm going to like what? Mod box top. Yeah. I go inside of that to see what's inside of mod box top. Eh, screw it. Sorry about it. I don't know if it's going to be hard, man. I don't know if it's going to be hard. So we're going to go inside of man. That looks pretty good. Right. This right here, these are just like, these are like tile types. They're not even tiles, per se, right? So what is a tile? A, uh, it's a type of... It has a tile type. What's cool, though, is that we can, like, structure this guy. But, like, if they're all the same struct, then I don't think you would. Alright, that's sort of a thing, right? Um, hmm. We've got, I don't know, so we've got some, got some tiles. And now a bunch of stuff down there is broken, but that's fine, because we can say, like, uh, yeah, we, we just come in here, alt enter. Import. Alright, and that should have up here, I think, done some done some of that for us. So now we have our yeah, now we have our tile time. Uh, these guys should hopefully compile again soon. Not that they matter, and I'll probably be deleting them soon eventually anyway. That's okay. We're gonna ask Russ if things built since IntelliJ is too slow to figure it out for us. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, oh, I, I, I say that. Tell you it's piled up. Oh, but so is this guy. Sweet. Alright, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So we've got... What do we have, man? Yeah. yeah, so we need... Tile size seems important. I'm not 100% sure if we're talking about pixel size or game unit size. So that'll be, uh... So we'll have to figure that out kind of as we go and as we implement. Let's see. Do I want a tiled map? I don't know, who even uses tiles, man? This tile has a tile ID, which for us is like our tile type, right? And then what else? It has a position. Why? Why would you store a position inside of your tile? That seems not correct. So I'm not 100% sure why he made that choice. Um... Oh. The vertex? Why do you need to store any of that stuff? Inside of your tile. I don't get it. I don't get it, man. Alright, so. So for now, we're just gonna assume that we don't need to, right? Until proven otherwise. And then what? What are we gonna do? We're gonna do something crazy, right? We're just gonna say, like, pub rock chunk. And, uh, what are we gonna do? Here we go. Open. Open curly. Alright. We can do like a pub position. Do chunks. Why does this guy think everything needs to know what position they're in? That doesn't even make any sense. Like, why doesn't the thing being stored need to know where it is stored? Like, where inside of this file did I store the information of where it is stored? Nowhere, right? It's stored by virtue of being stored in a particular place. The file doesn't know. It's not in the, it's not in, you know, even the low-level code of this file as to where it is. That's something that the operating system manages, right? So it's just, it's got a path somewhere. Like, yeah, file does, files don't know where they're stored. How would a chunk don't need to know where it's stored? It doesn't make any sense. So, I'm going to say pub tiles. I'm going to say what now? Uh, we're going to do an array. We're gonna do an array. What type of array are we gonna do? Hmm. We're gonna do some sort of like tile type array. How many do we want? I think we want 10, 24. I think that's what we want. Why? Why do we want 10, 24? I'm pretty sure it's something like 32 times 32 is equal to 10, 24. I'm not 100% sure. Let's double check our CLs here, right? So 32, 32, it's 10, 20. Excellent. 
this right here is basically going to give us a chunk of world map that is 32 tiles by 32 tiles. Now notice our notice our window here again, right? Where we've got you know, 32, I don't know if you noticed, is less than 40. Right? So to you know, the height here is a fair bit greater, which is fine. But width-wise, like you're pretty much always going to be showing at least two chunks of map on the screen, right? And that's uh, that's, that's assuming that you're not at like a boundary of four, right? Or we're, uh, we're in the middle of the screen, right? Is the top right of a chunk? But even if like you're in the top middle of a chunk, you could be. That sounds like six, right? Yeah, it sounds like six. Because what? So they're, they're they're 32 across, right? So if you're in the top middle, then you are like around 16 and a half, right? Tiles in the middle. So to the left of that you have a chunk. To the right of that you'll have a chunk. Right? And then like like I said, if you're at the top of it and you're showing the upper ones too. That's like uh, six chunks total. That uh, that'll be seen. That's kind of where that's kind of what we're looking at here. Is like, all right. So at most there'll be six chunks, kind of uh, shown, uh, rendered at a time. Uh, and that's with uh, that's with this uh, ten twenty four. That's a uh, that's a lot of tiles. I think for a chunk to have. I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure it's a lot of tiles. You know, but it's like seems like a fair amount. And this is a number that we can play with over time, right? Maybe maybe it's better to see more chunks, more smaller chunks. I don't know, right? Uh, I do know that uh, we don't want to see like uh, you know, like we're we're doing this for a reason, right? Is to cut down on the like we've already determined like a a window has nine hundred tiles in it, right? Say window. A game world, like if we're doing something even remotely samey to like something like uh to that to the to the Link's Awakening sort of Zelda game that we were looking at, remember? You know, those maps can spawn many windows worth of size. Right? So kind of like, yeah. You know, we can multiply that by six. Right? So uh, by six, so a six k basically, right, of tiles to to kind of go through to determine what is visible, what is not visible. Uh, you know, how how much should we be looping through? It's just six. It's six k, right? We don't want to be looping. The point is, we don't want to be looping through millions of tiles, which uh, for for large game worlds, it could be you could easily get to, and uh, you know. It'd be pretty easy to get to that sort of sizes. Uh, we also want things, I think, that are relatively easy to stream, relatively easy to sort of dispose of when we're not using it. You know, 1K sort of looks looks good. Yeah, everything needs to be pretty everywhere. All right, so. Yeah, so we got, uh, so like 1024. It seems like it's a good starting place. It's a good place to think about. For, for doing what we're doing, and we'll see how well it works, and we can we can definitely play with sizes, to, uh, figure out what is the best, right for for our project here. I like the idea of making it an array. We'll see how well it works. Uh, you'll notice that in the um, yeah, so this is so this is what the original looked like. Oh, that's even. Oh, right, that's even. That's the tile set layer. Still, uh, no. For under the for under chunk. That was that was theirs. They had a vec vec of tile. And again, their their tiles were crazy. Right? Like why? You can kind of paste some of the stuff to look at it. It's like why? Why do we need all this? Why, why should a tile know, where, know what, what its position is? Why should a tile need vertex information? 
I should have tile need UV information. Doesn't make any sense. Right? I mean, because we were able to sort of like use a texture atlas already with uh, what we've got. Right? So this sort of information right here, this that, that was all we needed to render a tile. You know, using a, uh, using a texture atlas. And I think that we should continue with using a texture atlas. Um... Yeah, see this guy, this guy here, he's got, he's got a texture atlas. And so we'll just, uh, as part of our components for, for rendering these things, we'll, we'll require that, hey, yeah, we needs to have a, um, you know, the map needs to have a texture atlas associated with it, please. That sort of a thing, right? And then, uh, and then these tile types, boom, good to go. Right? So, so I don't, I don't know why we need to know about positions. Maybe this is maybe this isn't the position on the map. Maybe this is position in the in the texture, right? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why he has vertex or UVs. Um, but yeah. So uh, I'm just gonna stick with my uh, super simple tiles, right? Because I don't know what's. Uh, I don't know. We're gonna figure it out. All right. So. So we've got our simple chunk. So we might want to do like uh, some basic little stuff here. I can think of at the moment, right? We could find some sort of a uh, uh, function here, right? So we can have some sort of like a uh, tile, right? X. What do we want here? U eight. That's all we need. We don't need anything bigger than a U eight, do we? I'm pretty sure U8s go up to 256. I'm also pretty sure that, um... Yeah, we can't ever be negative. Yeah, only, only ever positive with these guys, right? Yeah. Only ever positive! So... And, uh, yeah, I think the max number then is 32? 31? Yeah, 0 through 31 is kind of what we're looking at. Like, like, I can do like a U4 or something, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> then we could say, uh, yeah, Y is a, uh, what, a U8. Something like that, right? And then what are we going to do? We're going to return some sort of a tile type. And then, what, so, how do we access our stuff, then, right? Oh, uh, what we're going to do, then, is we are going to say, Oh, we need self. We need, like, a reference to self. Alright. So now we can say self.tiles. Do I use a parentheses in the rest, or is it the square brackets? I don't know. Three. What are you mad about? Anything? You just, you just being slow? <laughs> Move occurs because tile type does not implement the copy trait. What? What are you talking about, tile type? Oh man, I thought I taught you better than that tile type. It's uh, right. Copy. Hmm. Good night. Copy. What? Oh, it wants clone. All right, fine. Clone. Copy clones. Actually, there's probably a few derives we need for this guy, isn't there? We probably need like what? Partial EQ, EQ. Um, I don't know. It's normally like a bunch of those sorts of things that we need. Where'd my Where'd my data model go? I've got a I've got some good stuff in here. Yeah, debug is good. Yeah. Let's just let's just give it all the let's give it all the derives, right? That seems to make the most sense. So I don't think okay, here we go. 
And there we go. Can't find a macro to serialize. We should import it or something then. Wait, so I have to do everything? Yes, yes we do. We have to do everything. That's fine. Just how it is. Alright. Cool. Let's just... Yeah, I'm just gonna stick that in there. Not gonna care. Alright. Now what? Don't tell me don't, don't tell me about no copy traits. Uh, move occurs because of stuff. What are you talking about, man? How type does have the copy trait now, doesn't it? Yeah? No? Crap. <laughs> I done messed up. Copy. Ah. I'm gonna clone. Ah. Just all of it. Just leave me alone. All right. So now it's just a bunch of warnings, but you didn't use X or Y and stuff. And it's like, yeah, I know. So leave me alone. And then, uh, okay. Now what? Now it's mad because this isn't public. That's fine. All right. So now, what do we want? Yeah. Yeah. So we need to have. So the width here we know is basically a thirty-two. Right. That's just a constant. So we could basically say we want thirty-two times one plus x. There we go. Why syndices are of type U size? Like, what? Can't be indexed by you? Are you kidding me? As U size. Don't care. Oh my gosh. Also, in retrospect, right? We need to have. Wait, so, U size? 32 U size? Alright. Maybe then. What? Can I just. Can I just do that then? Whatever. Aren't you size is huge? I don't know. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? As you saw. Size. You size all of the things individually and give me a you size back. Oh my goodness. It's just like, you know, you're trying to be efficient with like, I don't need that much of a data storage type here, you guys. Just a U8 would be fine. That's fine. I mean, it's kind of right, right? Because as soon as you start like multiplying the stuff and adding the things together, etc., it's gonna be it's going to quickly overflow, you know, from the kind of the 256 sort of uh, upper bound or 255 really, but right because from zero to 255, I think is uh, what the 8 bit gets us there, and then uh, that's fine. So we're just like as you size, as you size, as you size, and then uh, all right, yes, a little programmer, yeah, we're we gonna we're gonna. We're going to as you size all the things. And then we can return the tile for our XY coordinate from what? Our single our single dimension array. Alright, 24 by 24. Very cool. Now, it seemed like there were some aspects of Rust 
that change for a raise, depending on whether you're doing a 32 size or, you know, larger. We've chosen to go larger. I'm not 100% sure what changes in rest once the size goes above 32. The documentation wasn't super clear. But uh, I guess we're, 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 we're going to find out. And, you know, it makes you wonder. It's like, all right. So then maybe a uh, two-dimension array would be useful. I don't know. All right. Hmm. I wonder if we can mutate our the data in our array. Alright, so if I say pub fn tile at mut or mute self, right? X U8. Why? Why? U8. And we're not gonna return anything. All right? Instead we wanna take in a tile type. I want to be able to say something like self dot tiles. Then what? So the same exact sort of thing here, right? Yeah. And then we could probably even have like a little helper function that just does this. Oh, good night, programmer. Yes, good night and farewell to you. Now, now we can try saying stuff like boom is equal to TT. Um, save, control 9. What happens? Oh, there's duplicate definitions of stuff at things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so set. Maybe we could do like some sort of set tile. And that seems happy and good. All right. Cool. Let's go ahead then there and match it so that we know, like, set tile, get tile. And that's what we're going to uh, expect. All right? Since I couldn't do, like, a... I couldn't do overloaded definitions. I did not like that. But that's okay. It's like, you know, tile 4, X and Y, set tile. So we can, we can maybe mutate our tiles. Yes. And then, like, um... Maybe, maybe, maybe later on we have some sort of dirty flag in our chunks, right? And it'll be like, oh, this chunk is so dirty. And we'll, uh, you know, why? Because something will have changed. And, like, we'll, we'll set it up. I don't know. I'm, th I'm thinking about, like, how to do data updates kind of mid midway. Kind of change out tiles and stuff. That'd be fun. And then, uh, then what do we do? We, we got one, man. Bunch of stuff. Bunch of things. We want to get tiles. We want to set tiles. We got these X's and Y's. We got some tile types. Yeah. All right. Look at that guy. He's pretty cool. All right. Yeah. So right now he says he's got a tile set layer, and that's what takes a bunch of chunks. And it's like, all right. And then for his uh, for the map, he has layers, right? Which take what a layer. Or, no, a vector of layers, right? So, right now we're just, we're happy with the one layer. Yeah, so what does that mean? That means that if we have, if we want to have multiple layers, which you could do, then you basically then have, you know, maps on top of maps. I mean, that's, that seems easy enough. That's why I'm not, I'm not terribly concerned about there being, um, yeah, about layers. Implementing them in our map. Yeah. All right. You can uh, you can do a lot of things. All right. So. Let's see. Tile size back to. That was in our map here. And so I guess he needs some chunks. He needs some chunks. So for this one, we're going to have some variable. We're going to have some variable sizes for our chunks. It could be that uh, some maps are small enough. They can fit within a single chunk. Right, and then you do basically just end up with the black borders around the around where the map is, sort of a thing, right? But uh, you know, as long as it looks pretty and cool and stuff, and it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, like you know, you go into a building, right? And the building's only only so big, right? You go into a little dungeon, you go into a room, and I only want to show you the one room, 
right? And you go through a door. And then you go, ah, oh, there's the next door, right? All right, there's the next room. You do that sort of thing. You can play around with that, right? We've got, uh, we could have small maps, maybe. Especially in the beginning to fool around with, right? That are only one chunk. So these, these, this, uh, these, so we need some variability with our sizing here. That's what I'm saying. So we could do something like this. Pub. Chunks. And then, uh, yeah, we could, um... Let's just, let's just keep going with the whole single dimension array sort of a thing, I think. You know, it's like... I don't know that we need more than one dimension sort of a thing. Then what? Then we have, like, uh... Like how many? Like what's our like our map? Our chunk width? Our map width? Right. So this is a variable for us because we don't we don't know. Right. So we got we want we want to have a vec chunks. So why are you why are you giving me like stink eye here? All right. There we go. He he got better. All right. Cool. Yeah. We, we want some of that. What else do we want, man? We got we got tile signs. Right, and like, uh, what is the map? Map width. Let's just be, uh, specific here, right? And then, uh, dude, do we, do we need, like, anything bigger than, like, the U8 here again? <laughs> how many, how, how big do you want the map to be? I feel like 256 chunks wide. More than sufficient. Remembering that, yeah. Especially, yeah. So in the wine, that's like almost almost a full screen, in like a nineteen twenty by ten eighty sort of a view, right? So uh, yeah, it's eight tiles short, full screen. Right, cool. So then what? Well, he's got some sort of image folder in here. He's got some sort of tile signs. Yeah, we've got tile signs. We have a map with. He's got layers. We've got chunks. That's fine. And he also has just a tiled colon colon map, which is like, I don't know. What is, what's that about? Sounds like you already had all the data you needed. What do you, what do you need tiled? What do you need a tiled map for? What he called it? He called it mapped. All right, let's uh do a search here, I guess, for map. We're looking for that lowercase guy here, right? Self dot map. Self dot map width. Oh, see, there's there's his width. I knew it was somewhere. He was hiding it from me. All right, so yeah, see tile width. Self dot map dot tile width. Don't you already have? It? He's got a tile size. What's the difference between tile size and tile width? Right, because like this is a uh, this is a vec two, so it's uh, it's got x and y, so you could say, easily say like you know, a tile size dot x, tile size dot y. Right. So what's the k is la difference? So we've got. Ah, okay, so look at that. Yeah, let tile size is equal to this. Which is what? The same thing as tile width and tile height, but as F32s. Right. Because they need to be floating points for some reason when they're pixels. I don't get it. Alright, so... Yeah. And then we can figure out some map centers. And what? We can match self map orientation. Here, I don't, I don't know about a lot of that. Why, why are you getting a tile size when you've got a tile size? I don't, I don't make no sense. And what? You got some, you got some tile width up here. Where did that come from? Why on earth did it come from the function? That doesn't even make any sense. He's not even taking in self. 
So these are our functions that are just called somewhere. I don't even know, man. It make, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. This one actually takes in self. Which is interesting. Alright. These guys, they just return Vec 2s. Alright, so where's, where's Project Ortho even called at, man? Alright, where's, uh, where's Project Ortho? Oh, it's in the, it's in that center function, I guess. Oh yeah? Yeah. All right, what about unproject? Unproject. Ortho. Nowhere. Huh. Probably called somewhere. I really want to look for it. All right, so. And he's got this tile map center thing. He's got this tile, yeah, tile map components. That seems like, that's like our bevy. That's our, that's our super bevy eye kind of integration stuff thing. We could, uh, where did we put our components before, right? Because we already have a thing that we wrote that has some components. I think, yeah, we just stuck them in here. Didn't we? Maybe? No, I don't think we actually came up with uh, components for our pixel ortho projection. No? Yeah? No? Yeah. Unless we did somewhere, and I don't know. Here's some bevy IRS. Yeah, I don't do much of anything in here yet. Alright, cool. So back to our main. Uh, yeah. Components seem cool. We, we're gonna need some components. For now, let's keep it at the same level as our render plugin. Maybe we'll maybe we'll put into a components module later. Do something. I don't know. Alright, so we want uh so we have a pub struct box map. Component. This is all just for the Vevi integration stuff. We haven't gotten to the render code. Alright, so. It's our box map components. We want to have a, uh, what? We want to have a pub. Right? Map asset. So we want a handle to a map. Yeah, that looks pretty fun. We could do, we could do, we could do that. What's a handle? I don't know. Important. Yeah, take it from Prelude. Anything you get from Prelude, take it from the Prelude. That looks good. So, we've got, uh, we've got some map. We've got some, what else we got? Do we need materials? I don't know. I don't know what we need. In fact, I don't think, I don't, I don't know that we do need materials. I don't trust their materials. Maybe, maybe we do need their materials. I don't know. But you know what I'm going to go with? You know what I'm going to go with? I want to try and going with what's already developed for us. Right? Inside of the, uh, why is, why does it seem like it's commented out and not doing anything? Oh, because uh, we messed up in here. We did like a pub thing, etc. And now it's all mad. Alright, so... Yeah, I think we want some of this texture atlas. Yeah, and look, look, this guy's got like handles to stuff like that, right? Yeah, he's got a handle. We already figured out how to do some sort of a handle thing. Let's do some handle things. Yeah. So let's, uh, yeah, so pub. Uh, I don't know. Texture atlas is equal to a handle on our texture atlas. And do ba do so bevy sprite, yeah? Boom. Oh. Eh. Give me some give me some of that texture atlas. I mean Bevy's already got a thing for it. Why reinvent the wheel? Now it may be that we will need to do something differently to help facilitate our rendering stuff. But uh, we'll see. We'll figure it out, yeah? That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna figure this stuff out. The idea is to keep the user API simple and good. Yeah, you know, make it seem like it's a part, of, like it's always been a part of Bevy from the from the beginning, right? Kind of the idea. We've got our Vox map components, right? 
So yeah, so he needs to be some sort of like, what? We got some sort of a Durant in here for a bundle. That's what seems to make him happy. So we need to have some sort of a pub origin. I don't know, man. Let's just call it what everyone else calls it. Transform. Right? Transform. Yeah, let's give it some of that. What else we got? Is this a center? Do I need a center? I don't know. I don't know if we need a center or not. Alright, so we can go ahead and import that. Yeah, support it for Bevy Prelude. Prelude. Oh, so pre or prey? Prelude. Prelude sounds cooler. Yeah. Prelude is like a thing before a thing, right? It's the prelude. I don't, I don't feel like that's what this is. I don't know if we're really talking about prelude. Or whatever, right? Uh, we can so we can play around with this sort of uh, whether or not we need an origin later, right? And so for now, what could we do? We can say yes. We can go ahead and import default. So we will import the default for our for our box map. Fn default. Um, self open curly. Now we got we got some self again because this right here is the type that we return. This is the start of our method definition. This is us constructing the thing that we said that we were going to return. No semicolon means that we return the thing without having to specify return. Excellent. All right, so so we got some map asset, right? And we can do apparently we can do some sort of handle default, which is probably going to say like you know unhandled thing, right? We want to have, uh, let's go ahead and use our texture atlas here for a handle a default. Alright. That looks good, yes. Now, we have uh, a transform. Transform default, which is going to be probably like something close to identity. Alright, some sort of identity transform. We'll just throw that up in there. Beautiful. All right, so we now have we now have sort of a little component bundler thing that we can do for our box map, right? Our voxel tile map sort of solution thing here, right? This, ooh, is this vox tile map? Yeah, that's, I messed up there, man. We should call this vox tile map components, as opposed to later on we might want grid maps or even like just pure voxels. Right, we're, we'll fig we're gonna figure out what we're doing. All right, so we got some voxel tile map components, and that looks good. This is our voxel tile render plugin. So these things here, they're relatively simply named because like they're already inside of our vox tiles. So this right here, yes, yeah, so this that, that effectively communicates what it is that we're doing. So here's our pipeline for it. Here's our map. For box tiles, right? Here's our, uh, you know, here's our plugin for our box tiles, right? So that all looks pretty good. This guy, he just kind of put the components stuff in with where the map is. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you just threw it in there with the map. We could do that, I guess. Yeah. They. We have some sort of a uh, map resource provider state. It seems like for maybe uh, we got chunk components. Oh goodness! Oh my! Oh yeah! What do we need for chunk component? That's where some sort of render pipeline is. Ah, all right. So, yeah. Yeah. Process loaded tile maps. Mm-hmm. All right. Now we got. Yeah, we just gotta. We got a lot of stuff to figure out. It's heading on 10:30, and I feel like this is uh, this is gonna be uh, quite the project. Quite the project. Tell you what, I might try to get an early start on this uh, tomorrow. 
So, Enigma's fans, you could be aware of that. Maybe. We'll find out. <laughs> well, I'm Enigmas. Uh, we are trying to build some sort of a tile renderer. Our Vox tile renderer, right? In Rust, compatible with the Bevy game engine. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're playing around with uh, defining some sort of a Vox tile a renderer plugin, right? Our Vox tile render plugin. Uh, maybe I should even just, uh, I don't know, it seems like it's more than just about rendering. Yeah, maybe I should, uh, I should rename this. This is just the, uh, Vox tile plugin. Yeah, kind of, uh, it's not, it's not just about rendering anymore, right? We've got a lot of we got a lot of data to store. We got a lot of stuff to try to, to try to render. We've got a, a wide variety of chunks and things. So this guy's uh, so these guys are looking pretty pretty cool. Uh, yeah. I'll see. We were talking about influences, taking some notes, uh, trying to figure out what it is that we wanted to do. Uh, we did a little bit of stuff. Ooh, we can't find bundle in this scope. All right, but convert to tuple. Oh, IntelliJ is like, I, what are you talking about, man? I mean, I mean, I, I mean, everyone knows what a bundle is. Where is bundle? That's that's rather annoying. All right, so I'm going to assume it's in prelude somewhere, like some sort of bevy prelude. Yeah. Uh, so let's try that. Are we inside of map for this? No, I don't think so. I think we're just in here. So, for fun now, let's just type in bundle. Hey, there we go. Thanks a lot, IntelliJ. I totally could have figured out that I needed that. Alright, so yeah, let's definitely get to where we can compile, and I think we're good for the night. Let's, um... So we got some main here, we got our other stuff. We got our little, we got our bundle we defined. Yeah, look at that. This guy, that's a successful sort of thing there. We got that. Boom, look at that. Our tile example still works. So with all that work, we haven't broken, we haven't broken the program at all. Uh, we just confused it a little bit by adding some, uh, adding some stuff, right? And indeed, Wolfie, that's why I am signing off soon, covering the stuff and things that we have done. And, uh... That's what we're gonna do. Alright. So until next time. Yes, I almost got it. I almost got it. Gotta remember what I was doing. So until next time. Take us home!